This is going to be a journey into the past, a recent past, but one that recedes with every passing day. Our grandchildren will regard the steam locomotive as a dinosaur, as remote as stagecoaches are to us. The smell and the sight of what we call the proper train may be history, but it was part of our lives. Here is a glimpse of one railway, the Cambrian. Not one of the greatest, perhaps, but one that recalls what a steam railway was all about. The engines called after English manor houses and the curiously named duke dogs have gone now, and with them the atmosphere we remember. There is no steam on the Cambrian now, but there was then. Oswestry for many years was the hub of the old Cambrian system. The head office and main works were here, and here it built some of its carriages and wagons and maintained its locomotives. When these scenes were shot in the late 1950s, its importance had been much reduced by British railways. It was part of a much larger district under Western Region and later under London Midland. Nevertheless, it was still surprisingly busy with services to Aberystwyth, the coastline to Barmouth and Pathelli, and the Ellesmere and Wichich line. There was a local service to Llanvothlin, and a few years previously, the Tanat Valley line, which had closed in the coal shortage of the early 1950s. There was considerable freight traffic and substantial stone carryings from the quarries at Lunkless. The works, although much reduced, still accepted engines and rolling stock for repairs and maintenance. The passenger station boasted two through platforms and a bay, and the refreshment room was still open. There was a frequent service to Gaboin on the old Great Western branch, worked by a steam auto set. Here is a service leaving Gaboin for Oswestry. The Oswestry, Ellesmere and Wichich Railway was an early part of the Cambrian system, but in later years the passenger traffic was mainly local. In 1959 there being only two through trains from Aberystwyth to Wichich, at 12.35 in the morning and the six o'clock stopping at principal stations only.
Ellesmere station was the junction for the branch to Wrexham, which had its own service provided by a steam auto set. The goods yard here is now covered by an industrial estate and the line obliterated. Fens Bank was an isolated village station but had extensive coal sidings and this one coach train ran on Boxing Day in 1960. Whitchurch was where the Cambrian main line officially began, the zero mile post being at the junction with the Shrewsbury and Crewe Railway and locals were serviced and turned at the shed here. Dovey Junction, where the coastline begins, is the most isolated junction on the system, the only access being by a footpath from Glandiffy, a mile or so to the southwest. It was originally built in bungalow style, but rebuilt after the war. In the days of steam, it was possible to accommodate four trains at once here, but this would only have been necessary at the height of the summer season.
Borth, the most important intermediate station between Dubby Junction and Aberystwyth. The crossing loop has now been taken out and the down platform removed. Here is Hook Norton Manor on the Cambrian Coast Express leaving for Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth, the end of the main line, 95 and three quarter miles from Wichich. The station was much rebuilt in 1926 after the grouping by the Great Western. The branch to Carmarthen started here and had a sparse service of three trains a day, right up to its closure in the beaching cuts of the 1960s. Aberystwyth had a large goods yard at this time, and as well as through services to Shrewsbury and Wichich, several local services to Mahantloth and Barmouth. The engineer's inspection train was an occasional visitor here and the Hawksworth Inspection Saloon number 80972 was preserved at Tisley and returned to the Cambrian in 1987 on the steam specials. The principal train on weekdays was the Cambrian Coast Express, leaving Aberystwyth at 9.45 a.m. Here it is entering Borth. The locomotives and rolling stock at this time were kept in beautifully clean condition by the shed staff at Aberystwyth. The up Cambrian Coast Express enters Mahantloth. It is at Mahantloth that the long eastbound gradient over Tilerdig Bank really begins.
and for many years heavy trains were bagged to the summit from Mahantha's shed. Down Cambrian Coast Express enters Lambrimere Loop. Welshpool was used as the junction for the former joint London North Western and Great Western branch to Shrewsbury, although the actual junction was at Buttington, a mile or so to the northeast. This was closed as a station in the early 1960s. line leaves to the left for Oswestry and Wichich. Patheli is the terminus of the coastline. The present station was built in 1907, replacing an earlier one half a mile away on the edge of the town. This late evening shot at Barmouth shows how heavy the summer traffic could be in the peak season. This was the scene in the early 1960s. It was a busy day at Morfa Murdoch when a special charter from London via Rowabin and Langothlin crossed two service trains. On one occasion, a special train chartered by the Teleton Railway Preservation Society was double-headed by Lyndon Manor and 4555, a privately preserved prairie tank. Both locus and train leave Tarin for Mahantleth for servicing.
climb from Fairborn up to Friog Rocks is spectacular and was the scene of two major derailments in 1883 and 1933. These were due to rock slides and led to the construction of Britain's only avalanche shelter. We now join a service train travelling down the Dubby Estuary towards Mahuntleth. This train terminated at Dubby Junction and passengers transferred to the connecting main line. The last through train of the day climbing to Lerdig Bank. It was the up evening mail leaving Aberystwyth at 6 pm and arriving at Wichich at 10.14. This statue of David Davis, the great Welsh railway contractor and coal owner, stands in the village of Landinham near his home on the Mid Wales Line. The Mid Wales Line from Moat Lane Junction to Brecon passed through some of the loveliest and loneliest country in all of Wales. Apart from the small towns of Lanedlos, Raider and Bilt Wells, it went through only villages. These scenes were shot in the last fortnight of the passenger service, which ceased on the 31st of December 1962. The line to Lanedlos lasted for some time after the passenger service to convey material for the Cloeda Dam.
the line to Three Cocks Junction runs through the Upper Wye Valley. At Three Cocks Junction, the Mid Wales was joined by the Hereford Hay and Brecon line, and all services terminated at Brecon Free Street Station. Surprisingly, the refreshment room here was still open, and the station was well kept. There are no lines to Brecon now. The Mid Wales, the Hereford Hay and Brecon, and the Neath and Brecon are all closed and lifted, and Three Cocks Junction is now a Keller gas depot. Road, the Central Wales Railway, Swansea to Craven Arms, crossed the Mid Wales, although there was little interchange of traffic. Pantidur was the highest point on the whole system at 947 feet above sea level. This was a busy scene at Moat Lane Junction in 1961. Today, there is a single line through the site and the station has vanished. Winter could be bleak in this part of Wales. An afternoon train from Brecon runs through Tullock en route to Lanidlois.
These few years were to be the twilight of steam on the Cambrian. In a little while it would be gone, along with much of the old system. The sight of two coach trains in the lonely valleys of mid Wales and the stirring spectacle of a Great Western Manor eastbound on Teledig Bank with the up Cambrian Coast Express would be like the old cup in his shield, the Welsh dragon joined to the English rose. Just a picture in the history books. After the through route to Affenwen Junction on the Cambrian Railway was closed in 1964, Carnarvon became the railhead for this part of North Wales, and a DMU service was run from Llandudno. The branch was reopened some years later as a temporary freight terminal when the Britannia Bridge was being repaired after its disastrous fire. The line is now lifted and the station buildings demolished. This rare piece of film is at least 60 years old, when the Corris Railway was in full operation. This narrow gauge line was acquired by the Great Western at the grouping of railways in 1923. It ran from the town of Mahuntleth in Powys to the slate mining villages of Corris and Aberlefenny. Not long after these scenes were recorded, the passenger service ceased on the 1st of January 1931. From then on, it was used for slate and general goods until final closure in 1948. Two locomotives were acquired by the nearby Talithlin Railway. A local service from Welsh Pool pulls into Lanamonoc on a wet afternoon in January 1965 en route to Oswestry, a week before the services ceased.
It was here that the Potteries Railway terminated their passenger service and where the branch of Lankinog started. There are no lines here now. The site is an industrial estate. For many years, the Southern Railway ran a tram service for the boat passengers down the long pier at Ride. It was operated by petrol-driven Drury cars. This service was withdrawn in 1969. There was much to interest the enthusiast in 1959 with steam trains and ships like the Brading, ferrying holidaymakers from Portsmouth. Petrol rail cars were built for the Southern Railway in 1927 and operated the service along two tracks until its closure. In 1923, the Southern Railway shipped the first Adams 02 class 044 tanks to the island. They dated from 1889 and eventually numbered 23 locomotives. Their coal bunkers were enlarged in 1932 to give them more availability for traffic. Number 24 Calborn, now preserved at Haven Street, heads a train away from Pier Head. The local works and running shed was situated at Ride St. John's Road. W20 Shankling arrives with duty number eight disc on its buffer beam. Ventnor once boasted two stations, but by 1952, Ventnor West had closed. This station closed in 1966, and we see W25, God's Hill, arrive from under St. Boniface Down. W31 Chail is service for the return run to Ride. This loco, together with W24, were the last to be withdrawn in 1967, being retained for the Electrification Works trains. The Ride Shanklin route is now the only service operated by British Rail. The line beyond through St Boniface Down Tunnel to Ventnor being closed. In 1967, 46 ex-London transport tube carriages of pre-1938 stock were purchased to replace the steam service which ended on the 31st of December 1966. They were converted to 630 volt DC third rail working at Acton Works.
After the loss of its through services to Paddington in March 1967, Wolverhampton was left with only a DMU service to Birmingham Snow Hill. By 1971, when this film was taken, the station had degenerated into little more than a large bus stop. Dirt and dereliction were all pervading. The stations along the line all had the same air of abandonment, and already vandals were at work. Passenger traffic was very light, and according to one source, a taxi would have been sufficient on some days. It is difficult to picture now that only some few years earlier, Great Western kings and castles had thundered through these stations to and from Paddington. Snow Hill, that cathedral of the Great Western, resembled an abandoned hangar all through tracks lifted, only one bay in use, and the concourse a car park. Soon after, this service was to be no more. Vale of Rydal Light Railway was opened in 1902 as an independent company, but was later absorbed by the Cambrian. The railway was built to transport iron ore and sulphur from the Rydal Valley. But after the First World War, mineral traffic almost ceased. It then became primarily a tourist line. This is a record made in the 1960s when the locals were coal-fired. The shed at this time was beside the old harbour branch and the passenger terminal outside the main railway station because at this time the Carmarthen line was still open. It was usual at this time to steam only two of the three locomotives. 
The livery of both locos and carriages hark back to Great Western days. The locomotive backs down to the afternoon service. Come on, well. Prince of Wales is the only surviving original Davison Metcalf tank, although modified at Swindon. traffic pattern in the running season was one train in the morning and two in the afternoon. The maximum gradient on this 14 mile line is 1 in 48 and in wet weather heavily loaded trains were prone to slip badly. Thank <laughs> you. 
The terminus at Devil's Bridge had a run-round loop and a siding, and the water tower was just outside the station. At this time, the district traffic manager at Shrewsbury was Mr. Oliver Velton, who did much to boost the line's prosperity. The first station out of Aberystwyth was Lambadden. The line was sold by British Railways to the Brecon Mountain Railway in 1989. 